But I'm curious your thoughts on this, Tofa, um, with regards to the CFMEU, have basically very angry with the AFL uh, construction plans, um, including the Tasmanian Stadium and the Crows hundred hundred million dollar. Uh, headquarters, um, basically not including the CFMEU as much as they'd perhaps like. CMFEU leader uh, John Setka made the point this is going to cost the AFL a lot of effing money. Projects without our full cooperation are going to be an effing misery for them. Discernible, lovely guy, phenomenal guy. Um, Matt you know, he, Matt, Matt's always uh, really well um, versed on these things. He made the point on his Twitter. Um, Victoria, Australia is increasingly becoming Gotham City. I know someone who, despite strong hatred for the CMFMEU and never working in the construction before, just signed up as a member and is working on their sites because the money and conditions are too good to be true. They have confirmed to me that on the side that that on the the inside, the law doesn't matter. It is in part already Gotham with implied and real violence, standover tactics, bullying, manipulations, and thuggery. They believe that the unions, along with their crony superannuation funds, cannot be controlled by government. And it seems we can't stop the hedonistic growth of unions, either when even, sorry, of unions, either when even those opposed are now joining their filthy ranks. The unions, if you haven't picked up on the pattern, guys, I'm sure some of you in the construction industry have worked this out, very closely associated with the uh, Labor Party, whereas the Liberal Party, particularly mm. in New South Wales, they're more tied to the property developers. Tofa, what was your um, take on this particular story? I have absolutely no opinion on this story and I didn't kill myself by throwing myself off a highway. <laughs> <laughs> right. yes. um, yeah. Look, John Sedka is a man who stood in front of his own members in front of the CFMEU building uh, during the height of the, the union uh, protests against the vaccine mandates and he told his members that he was going to stand up for them and then he walked inside, walked upstairs, got on the radio and absolutely stabbed his own members in the back. Mm. This is a man who has very, very deep roots, absolutely tied in with the the, the, uh, the Victorian Labor Party, with Daniel Andrews in particular, in my personal opinion, but with the Labor Party as a whole, they wield enormous amounts of power. And Victoria, in my opinion, essentially has a, 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 a fourth branch of government. Mm. You know, we have, they have the legislative, the executive, the judicial, and the union. And uh, unfortunately, that's, you know, we, we were treated to this absurd scene straight out of a movie where the Fed, sorry, the Victoria Police and bikies were lined up in front of the union building, stopping union members from venting their anger at the union leadership. Victoria Police and people who, some of those individuals are absolutely known to be involved in organized crime. They have previous criminal convictions and they're standing there right next to police officers protecting a union boss, shoulder to shoulder. Mm. If that doesn't tell you what's really going on in Victoria, then nothing will. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. it's what you see those comments here. Nothing short of extortion. Mm. That's that's exactly what they are. Yeah. Unless you pay us this money, and we'll threaten you, we'll you know, we'll, we'll basically cause damage to you. That's extortion. And remember, all these, um, as you say, the ridiculous payments they're getting in Victoria. All this is coming from borrowed money. Mm -hmm. It's all put on the tab. It's running up the debt. Right? It's it's not sustainable in the long term. There will eventually be a day of reckoning for this in Victoria. Mm. And when that day of reckoning comes, there will be a catastrophic effects upon people's lifestyles. Mm. Now the question is, why is this one thing? Why is the government funding these stadiums for the AFL? Yeah. That's what I'd like to. Know. Uh, why should taxpayers' dollars yep. go into building a stadium yep. for the AFL mm. in Tasmania? Mm -hmm. Now the AFL, are, you know, with the, the the money that the organisation raises, the you know the TV rights that they have. Um, Surely they are wealthy and rich enough themselves mm. to take money off junior sport mm. to pay for all these expensive things and all these high, high grounds. Yeah. That's that's I think another issue that you know the public should look at. Yeah, look, you know, you have these. Uh, it's great to have these big stadiums, but someone has to pay for it. Mm -hmm. And where we're seeing that money instead of being uh, you know uh, controlled by a group that's uh, you know like s the super wealth of the AFL. Mm. think that they need some type of it. subsidies from the government is really outrageous. Mm -hmm. Especially other countries. Mm. <laughs> well, the unions really need to um, show their relevance, do they not? And I think the godfather would be proud of this particular situation because that's what it's like. It's the mafia.
Absolutely. Can I speak on this stadiums issue? It actually makes a lot of sense when you realise that governments depend on bread and circuses in order to avoid the people realising what's really going on. So, of course, the government is going to subsidise the bread and circuses, which then keep the people distracted so that they can keep on getting away with what they're doing and they'll just keep on subsidising and around the round it goes. We've got, got, uh, you know, politicians that control billions of public money essentially giving it to billionaires that own sports mm. teams so that they can make multi-million dollar mm. broadcast contracts and entertain the people and make even more money. Mm. Uh, it's mm. such an incestuous pit. And in the context of what we're talking about with, with the kind of corruption that we're discussing, it really makes perfect sense. It's just part of the course. Mm. Absolutely. You know, and I think that's why they have a fascination with, um, uh, with paying them so much. You know, you pay the gladiators a, a lot, take care of them, and the next day you send them out to die with regards mm-hmm. to you know, entertaining the public. Mm-hmm. Um, pay them a lot of money. You know, uh, elevate the status. A lot of women, you know, God, you know, God bless them, the guys, whatever. Um, you know, uh, a lot of women put that on a pedestal. I want to sleep with that guy. I can get some money out of him. Jared Hayne just got off the charges today, if you guys mm, saw. I saw that. Um, so that was appealed. Um, mm. And I think that this is a part of the control st- structure. Build a bigger coliseum, you know. Mm. Um, last story, um, uh, we're almost at the two-hour mark, is... Um, I was watching a really interesting interview between um, Donald Trump and um, he was being interviewed by Dr. Phil. First off, phenomenal interview. Um, you can watch 19 minutes of it um, uh, on his um, YouTube. The full hour blew my mind. I hadn't seen Donald Trump this authentic uh, in a very long time. Wow. Fresh content and everything was really interesting. One of the things Dr. Phil put to Donald Trump was he showed him a map of the uh, all the different areas that the uh, Chinese owned farmland. And um, it basically showed where the American 